Good day and welcome to all parents, sponsors and guardians. We've come once again to the end of another term, end of term three. And this again is a informative video to take you through the report and give you a little bit more clarity on what everything means. So starting with the first report, which is from our data scientist. Here we look at the players testing. So at the top we've got uh, we're reporting on their fitness and their strength this year from their testing. So the graph works as follow fitness, the lo a lower fitness score and a higher fitness score and strength, a lower strength score and a higher strength score. So we've converted all the tests to a score out of 100. So this is your player's fitness score out of 100 and his strength score out of 100. And this is where they place compared to everyone else at their institute. Um, this player in particular scored fairly well. If we look at this chart, people who score up in this corner, they are very fit and very strong and both these values will be close to 100. Players who score down in this corner are not very fit and not very strong and these scores will be very low. Here's the link that you have followed um, to view this video. And then here we've got our attendance chart again, where we've got the, the days attended at training, gym session, field session, days sick, and then the days injured, and the total possible sessions. And then the percentage. So that's been the same from term one to term to this term. So I won't go into that too much. Then we have all our testing uh, charts over here. So if it is your uh, second year at the academy or third year at the academy or institute, you will see your score from 2021. And if it's your first year, you're only going to see term one, term two, and term three. You're also going to see three lines on the graph. This graph in particular only has two, and I'll get to that in a minute. But your three lines will look like this. You'll have a green line with which is the SA under 20 standard. You'll have a red line, which is the position average. And then you have a blue line, which is your score. You'll notice that a lot of them don't have term two scores, and that's because these th this testing wasn't done in term two. Um, my apologies, if it was missing, if your score is missing, it's because the athlete was either sick or injured uh, for that testing. So we look here... Um, uh, like I said, weight with SA under 20s, they, they, we don't have that for weight because there is no SA under 20 standard. But that basically shows you for all your different um, tests how you scored. So we've got weight, we've got body fat percentage, which is how much fat you've got um, of your of your body weight. We've got max pull up, so higher score is a better. So yeah, this player scored higher than the SA under 20 average. One rep max one rep max bench press um, this play is slightly below the under 20 average and the position average three rep max squat that's um, as heavy as you can for three repetitions this play is scored slightly below the s under 20 average vertical jump higher score is better like with everything else i just mentioned so he's scoring here higher than the s under 20 average medicine ball throw quite a way below the s under 20 average Repeated sprint, here a higher score is better because we try and rack up as many meters. Um, so he is slightly below the S under 20 standard. And the Bronco, here we want a lesser time. So you, this chart has actually been flipped for you to make it easier. Um, so the S under 20 time is 5 minutes 10 and he needs to shave off another 13 seconds to get to that S under 20 standard okay that's it for the testing um, data and the gym data we're moving on to the match stats now the match stats this is a dashboard from the matches played now i'd like to remind you that um, in all the it's not sometimes always possible for a match to be filmed um, and if it's not filmed unfortunately it doesn't form part of the stats so the match count if uh your player participating in games that weren't filmed and unfortunately could not be coded, they won't be counted. Um, so this is Joe Soap. Joe Soap has played 18 games um, in total, 13 matches for the academy and five matches for clubs. 
for his particular club if you are at the Pumas Institute or at the Cheetahs Institute this will be slightly different you will have your Institute fixtures so perhaps 13 Institute games and then if your player represented the Union you will have the Union games um, looking at the stats we have at the top we have our attack then in the middle we have defense and then we have breakdown at the bottom it's quite simple I'll take you through but before I take you through you'll see every stat has a per game per game same in defense same in um, in uh, the breakdown so and turnovers so what that means is when your when a player plays let's say he plays 40 minutes we, and has, for example, 10 ball touches in those 40 minutes. We take those 10 ball touches, we divide it by the time he played, and we multiply it by 80 minutes. So these scores give us a comparative score where I can take this a player who's played 40 minutes and compare him to another player who played 80 minutes um, to get a sort of full 80 minute score, um, which we call a per game score. So this is the average if should Joe Soap play an 80 minute game he's going to most likely touch the ball 5.06 times so let's go through ball touches nice and simple these include carries and um, passes it does not include offloads because offloads are logged at a tackle situation so a carry has already been logged so we don't count that so ball touches are carries plus offloads and that gives you your total touches then we've got the touches per game like i spoke about line breaks that is whenever we beat the main line of defense and get uh, sort of force the defenders to turn you can line break either around the defense um, or between two defenders um, and then we have the line breaks per game for this particular player uh, tackle breaks that is when a tackle a tackler or, or opposition player attempts to make a tap tackle or impede the uh, attacking player um, and he successfully continues to um, advance um, without the, with, by losing the tackler um, and then your average tackle breaks per game then we have yeah we've got our total carries total carries per game total passes pass per game offloads offloads per game carry dominance dominant carry dominance is at the point of contact we have an imaginary line where the first point of contact is and if the ball carrier's hips end up on the other side of that imaginary line it was a dominant carry if the tackler's hips f end up on the other side of that imaginary line then it was a dominant tackle um, so when we get to tackle dominance the same thing applies there so it all applies to the imaginary line does he get over that as the carrier or does he get over it as the tackler so he and it's very common to see a higher carry dominance than uh, a tackle dominance just the nature of the game um, so uh, yeah so he's got 94 percent carry dominance pass effectiveness and offload effectiveness both of these are scored the same they a pass or an offload is deemed effective if it arrives at the receiving player slightly in front of the player and in line with his trunk in other words in the in the bread basket for him to catch it's not up at his face down at his legs um, it's in front of his torso allowing for an easy catch <clears throat> this the pass effectiveness effectiveness here is not dependent on whether or not it was caught then move along quickly we go to turnovers okay total turnovers per game a turnover is when uh, the opposition has the ball and um, the player successfully gains possession thus um, winning a turnover um, his average per game turnovers have at, at the set piece this is kick kickoffs um, so catching our own kickoff it is um, line outs and scrums uh, mostly line outs uh, because scrums tend to be a team turnover or forwards turnover uh, then we've got at the breakdown at the tackle situation and in general play um, and then defense we've got tackles tackles per game tackle dominance which i already discussed tackle miss this is where you make contact with the attacking player and fall off or miss that tackle and that attacking player is allowed to continue advancing um, then down to breakdown we have our total cleanouts so a cleanout is the action of taking a player out of the ruck we have our total bridges a bridge is an action of trying to secure the ball so maybe 
um, someone comes to try and take you out and you stand and hold your ground and protect the ball that is a bridge um, so we have our total clean outs uh, our clean out effectiveness was the did the player effectively intentionally or did he effectively clean out the play he was trying to clean out in his performing of a clean out and a bridge did he successfully stop the um did he successfully hold his bridge when trying to be cleaned out um and then we have our poach attempts a poach is an attempt to try and steal the ball at the breakdown um and the success uh his poach effectiveness so that is the su successfulness of his poach then we have our total arrivals which in this case is 50 and his average per game so this player will arrive at approximately three rucks per game his total attacking breakdown arrivals are 31 and defense is 19. so that's all for me for this informative video i hope this gives you a little bit more clarity and always as always please if you have more questions um please feel free to reach out to us contact your program manager and if he needs more clarity, you can contact either myself, Heinrich Panjik, or my colleague, Dr. Steve Den Hollander, and we'll be happy to assist as much as, much as we can. Good luck for Term 4, and stay nice and healthy during your break. Stay fit during your break, and we look forward to seeing you when you return. Keep well.